My name is Jessica Sinarski, and I have actually worked in adoption and foster care my whole career. I, in when I was in graduate school, I did my um, last field placement as a therapist and had several kids in foster care on my caseload and just thought, hmm, there's something here. And then my first job out of grad school was at a foster care and adoption agency in the Bronx. So it was a trial by fire. And while I was working there, I had the chance to do an adoption therapy certificate program at Hunter School of Social Work. And so that um, I've used that work. And now since I've been in Delaware for the last nine years or so, have gotten to work with a lot of other really wonderful people in the field. And um, as a therapist and consultant and trainer and all kinds of different hats. What kind of things do you see in your field and what kind of things do you deal with with foster care and adoptive? Um, is it teens? Is it kids? Is it parent? What do you sure. do? Yeah, so I have worked with all ages um, from, you know, from and, and all um, all parts of the adoption triad. So from uh, adult adoptees or people who were in foster care as kids and, and have grown up, um, moms who have made a plan for their kids, um, adoptive parents obviously, and kids of all ages. So what I have seen play out time and time again is this story of courage. And then especially for kids, but even into adulthood, that the things that kept them alive as they dealt with their uh, these, these traumas that came before adoption um, are the same things that are getting them in trouble in school and the same things that are making relationships hard later in life. And so that was actually the, the birth of the, I wrote a children's book called Riley the Brave and um, in English and Spanish. And what I saw is these, these things that protected them um, so these big porcupine moments or, you know, curling up in their sh shell like a turtle that then made it hard to be in relationships later. And so it, it celebrates the courage that it took to survive, but also, um, you know, what's this weird trust thing and how do I shift to that? And, and what can the adults involved do to help make that possible? Why do you feel that it is so important? I see that you do some, you do speaking. Um, yes. You talk about this a lot. Um, do. Why do you feel that this is important for um, any person to know? Community. We know about um, yes. schools that should yes. be trauma informed. Why yes. is it? Why is this important? So this knowledge is essential, especially brain based knowledge about trauma and and the after the aftermath of trauma um, is essential because from what part of your brain you're functioning impacts every aspect of life and so i've again i've just seen it play out in in lots of settings i as many therapists and and um, social workers are i've been involved in the school meetings where really well-meaning teachers and and school support staff are you know, feel like they're beating their heads against the wall because they've tried all the things they know to try and it's just not helping this kid. And, um, and that's just tragic to me. Same for, for parents. So as a therapist, I'll have parents come to my office who've seen other well-meaning professionals uh, who, who didn't know, right? you know, we don't know what we don't know. Everybody started their journey somewhere. I feel really fortunate that I got to start early on and just get um, immersed in this in this field and in this work. Um, not everybody has that chance. We all have lives, we all have things going on. So part of what I have tried to do is, I recently founded an organization called Brave Brains, and our mission is to, to provide trauma-informed solutions for home, school, and community. Because we know that kids who have had traumatic experiences in their life, who have dealt with abuse or neglect or separation from, um, you know, the loss of a, of a first family, um, that they need safe adults to heal. That's the only way that things are going to get better. There have to be people, there has to be sort of this, this um, therapeutic community around them that parents are obviously a huge part of, but the schools need to know what's going on and what's going to be helpful for this kiddo. The, um, the therapists and other community professionals need to, need to be involved in that as well. 
Um, I know the um, ACES score seems to follow me everywhere I go. And why is that? Um, for those who don't, and remember a lot of people are going to see this that don't know anything about this. What sure. is the ACES score and why is this, how is that connected to everything? So I'm, I am thrilled to see that there is more attention being paid to yes. ACEs. So Adverse Childhood Experience is the ACE, and studies have confirmed that the more adverse child experiences that a kid, that someone has in childhood, right, ACE, uh, the, there are just these layer upon layer of negative impact, um, but those can be those can be buffered. And so again, that's part of what that's part of what Brave Brains is trying to do is increase the ability of adults to buffer these ACEs. And for kids, it's not Brave Brains isn't just for adults, but for kids to know, hey, these are some things, these are some of my strengths. These are things, or you know, trusting this adult who when I when I haven't learned that trust is safe that's actually a good thing. Even though it's hard, that's actually a really good thing. And so I'm going to press into that. And the adults involved get to press into, hey, we're going to celebrate this little step because it's not going to be the giant leap toward behaving perfectly all the time or getting, you know, A's in school if we're, if we're dealing with some pretty significant um, brain damage, like the, the real impacts to brain wiring. That's not going to go like we want it to sometimes. Right, right, right. What would you want to tell the community uh, with everything that you teach and learn and deal with with um, all different types of families? What are the things that a community should learn about this? What, like just outsiders, they don't necessarily, that are not involved with foster care or adoption because some people just don't understand any of this, what would you feel that, you, that one statement that you'd love to let them know to understand what, why you're doing this or how it could affect them? Because there's a lot of people that don't realize, like you just said, teachers mm -hmm. don't understand that they've been beating their heads. Why is this not working mm -hmm. when something as simple mm -hmm. as just the way you change a sentence, yep. change the way they are? What would you want to yes. tell the community about this? So I think the biggest, that's a great question. The biggest thing is it's a brain thing. So if we can, if we can scale back our, our negative impact, well, let me say it this way. So when kids' brains are wired for defense mode, so there are two main systems in the brain. There's an upstairs brain and a downstairs brain. And in the downstairs brain is all of the self-protective behaviors. I need to survive on my own. I'm going to puff out my porcupine quills. I'm going to get my tiger claws ready. I'm going to curl into my turtle shell. Uh, it's, it's really lots, of, lots and lots and lots of positive experiences with a safe caregiver that builds the pathway to the upstairs brain, which is you know, all the things you want in school, like paying attention and dealing with boring stuff and cause and effect and all of that stuff, but it's also social engagement. It's also how we have good relationships. It's how we share with others. It's how we enjoy others. It's how we feel pleasure in someone else's company. That's all upstairs brain stuff. So. So for, I just want everyone in the world to understand that so much of life comes down to, it's a brain thing. That when these kids are wired for defense um, and, and for a brain to develop well, it has to be connected to a well-connected brain. So we need, we need safe big critters. We need adults who can keep their upstairs brain engaged even when they're being told by this little brain to not get close, to not, it's not gonna give you the same reward that you get from another student that you're teaching or from another, from, from your child that you might be parenting by birth. Your child by adoption might not give you all the same signals of, um, hey, this is working and it feels good and I like it, that, that other kids might and that, and so we really have to, it becomes the superhuman feat where we have to choose to stay open and engaged for this kiddo who's learning to trust. What kind of, do you have, um, do you have any recommendations of uh, different things people can read or do you think that there's, um, I mean, obviously we're, we're advocating for support groups. We're looking for yep. people 
connect with therapists? Or are there things that you find that you like to share with, um, obviously you wrote Riley the Brave for a I reason. Did. I um, did. What yeah. other things did you find that is great for people to read about? Yeah. Uh, so I think there are, there are lots of good resources out there. It's hard sometimes to sit down and read a whole book. That's mm -hmm. part of why I love that there are support groups and, and online groups and things where people can get connected. Conferences are another great way to, to get, uh, um, to get immersed in some information and let it sink into your bones a little bit in a yeah. way that doesn't necessarily happen when you're reading a chapter one day and then three weeks later trying to read the next chapter. Right. Um, that said, there are amazing books that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be where I am if I hadn't read. Like, oh, okay. the, like the Connected Child, I think that's an excellent resource. Um, there, are, there are two, so I have the great privilege of working with John Balin, um, who has written Brain-Based Parenting yes. and Neurobiology of Attachment-Based um, something, attachment-based therapy, I believe. Um, and both of those, they're, you know, they're a little bit more technical about the brain, but just chock full of amazing stuff for right. therapists. I think every therapist out there needs to know about the polyvagal theory and be applying that in, in their practice. Um, as far as therapeutic therapy modalities, I definitely am partial to the, um, body based like we ha we have to we have to help people feel safe in their bodies before we can get to any sort of cognitive reprocessing and upstairs brain kinds of things we we have to get the body and the downstairs brain regulated and so um things that it, that incorporate uh, movement and um you know rhythm pat ogden and the sensory sensory motor institute um, she does a lot of really great work along along those lines. Um, I did feel like there was a gap. I know there are great children's books out there for adoption and foster care, but I felt like there was a gap in a, a book that was really accessible for a wide variety of families yep. and addressed some of the brain stuff that was going on. Um, and then in, this, in the spirit of, you know, nobody has time to read a whole book, unfortunately, <laughs> Um, there's an afterword in Riley the Brave that takes some of the big points of some of these other books uh, and, and sort of boils it down to, okay, right. in three paragraphs, here's what you need to know that's going to be super helpful. Right. Um, yeah. I even found that it helped um, even something that I never even heard of uh, for my child, uh, bilateral integration. Yes, absolutely. I was very, DR, uh, bilateral stems. I had no idea, but even just that um, it took a couple of years for just simplistic things. But once that started, he started to feel connected yep. to himself because yep. you know, both parts of the brain were not yes. talking yes. to each other, I guess. Yes, my, exactly. I'm not a <laughs> professional yes. in that, but yeah. I learned from that too. And I found yeah. that different countries were doing that. They actually did it. I think it was Australia that is where I started and they do that in school to wake up their brain in the morning. Yes. I thought yes. that was very interesting. So Australia, New Zealand, and the UK are a little ahead of us on some of these regula reg uh, self-regulation things, well, co-regulation and self-regulation things that what our, what our bodies and brains need. Um, and you mentioned, you mentioned, you know, getting the sides of the brain talking to each other. I also use neurofeedback a lot in my in my private practice and have my yeah. clinicians coming up learning it so that they can incorporate that because yeah. it is just a huge resource, especially for our kids who have lived either a long time or in pretty severe defense mode. Right, right, right. To unlock some of those because their brain is fear driven. Right. It's not gonna look like fear. For a lot of for a lot of our parents, it's going to look like rage, or it's going to look like um, you know just general dysregulation. But it's a fear-driven brain, and so we need to use all the tools we have, EMDR, right. all the things we have to right. calm that fear-driven brain. Yeah. So some of this stuff is what you're going to be talking about it in the workshop, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, before. Um, I let you go. Is there anything else that you'd want to make sure that we mention to the community 
uh, we'll be mentioning, um, you know, Ryla the Brave in, in the post that we'll put up for you and everything so that, and I know that there's a, um, a Jessica Sonarski com or J sonarski.com so they can follow you there and they can look up uh brain bra what was it yeah brain? so i'll make sure that you have all the links um so bravebrains.com that's right has lots okay. of free resources for people lots of um you know if, if you've never heard of any of the trauma-based stuff or if you've been immersed in it for years you'll be able to find something that's useful awesome. for you and then rileythebrave.org also has lots of free resources and, and things to make this immediately applicable. Awesome. Um, in the workshop, I'm really excited to be able to be together with New York families again, Yay. living in Delaware. Um, and I will be doing two workshops, one specifically geared toward parents or those who are um, teaching parents, so it, it would be helpful for both. So that, and we'll go over some of the parenting tips and tricks that seem to be helpful in light of the brain science that we know to be awesome. Awesome. impacting everything. And then for the professionals and, and others sort of on the periphery involved in, in the lives of children who have experienced trauma, that workshop will be, again, tips, tools, tricks, things that you can use, and especially a lot of the resources that I've created, making sure that those are um, out there and in your hands, because most of them are out there for free. So right. I want to make sure they're, they're getting utilized. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.